Hello guys, my name is John and I'm one of the leaders for VNY, Vineyard Nordic Youth Movement. And today I'm going to share some thoughts that's been on my mind for quite a while now and I hope it will inspire you and I hope it will help you to stretch your life to see people in need and see cities being restored because that's my purpose and my big why in life that I want to be part of of making things better for other persons, for regions, for companies and everything. So today's uh, theme and what I'm going to talk about is the door to a transformed city. And the first question that I want to open up this talk with and I want that I want to send to you and to me and all of us is what dreams do you have for the future? After hearing a story which I will soon tell you, my heart and attitude forever changed. But before we go that, I will share some thoughts. So in my life, and especially for the last couple of years, as I said, I have had a feeling inside of me thinking, if God is real and he's the one he says he is, I want to be part of it for real. I don't just want to go to Sunday services, being part of small groups and do the reg regular church stuff. If that's everything there is, I want to be part of doing the real stuff that matters. Seeing lives transformed, seeing cities impacted by the one who created it all. To see the original design of this world to be brought back again. I don't just want to sit and pray for it or talk about it. I want to be part of it. Because if God is real, I want this world to know that. And I want his power to change the way this world is moving and develop in many ways. I want the true love and peace that sets people and cities free to have free way through my life to the ones in need. I have a passion for the local context. I think that there is in the everyday life, meeting one person at a time, that we can be part of spreading love, hope, joy and peace, which can then start to change. And out of those moments, we can see cities being restored back to its original design. But it all starts with one person, one moment at a time. I have a heart to help out in the local area, as I said, in doing good for the people on the outside, people that are left out and not cared about, the broken and the hurt people, which everyone has abandoned. But I also have a heart for, you know, normal, regular people like, like you and me, maybe and other people that seems okay on the outside, but on the inside struggling with different things like depression, self-hate, addictions, and a feeling of not being good enough. I know God loves these people. He loves you, he loves me, and he loves all of us. And he wants to restore and rebuild. My favorite Bible verse or Bible passage is a passage that have been stuck with me for a while now, and it's from Isaiah 58. It talks about what the real fast is that God is after and it emphasize on loving people, giving food to people, clothes and house to the ones in need, praying for people. In the end, it says that if we do this and act in this way, we will be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, making the communities or cities livable again. This is spot on what I want my life to be known for. I mean, this is crazy good news to be part of doing something great for this world, great for the people around us. Doesn't, don't you want to be part of this? I mean, not because I want to glorify or applaud my own life or that I am a good person, no. But because I want the real thing to happen. I want the real thing. I want to see things. I want to see lives restored again. And I want my life to restore, or I mean, I want my life to reflect, I mean, 100% of what this God and Christian life thing is all about. And it's about restoring lives, which will then restore cities. And they will be livable and flourishing like never before, like the way it was designed for. And I want to be part of that. But often in life, this has felt like a big and unreachable project. How can I, or a small group with me, change a whole region? How can we influence and see this happen? I always realize that it's only through the power of God that this can happen. But still, 
how will this happen? How can I or my small church here in this local context where I live or where you live be part of doing this? Is it even possible? Yeah, I think so. And this story that I will share now that I talked about earlier might open up uh, the view wider for you. It did for me. So the story that I want to share is um, from a sermon I heard from a pastor from Vineyard Anaheim in Orange County in outside LA. And um, this guy uh, is living in Santa Ana, a small city in that region. And he shared about um, his life that he, he had been Christian for, for a while. And uh, I mean, he used to be a painter, uh, like paint, uh, you know, like uh, portraits and stuff like that. But he hadn't do, done that for a couple of years now. And, and he had this homeless guy outside where he lived. And everyone in Santa Ana knew this guy because he was, you know, out on the streets. And in the nights he was uh, shout, shouting and and it was a little bit annoying, maybe you can say. And uh, but but one night this this guy, this pastor, got hard for for this person, and he he went out and started to talk to him, and and he asked him about his story, his life story, that no one knew. He was supposed to be. He came to LA to with a big dream of being a musician, and and everything just fall apart, and and then he end up where he 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 was at that time as a homeless guy, and. Um, this pastor asked, like, can I paint, can I paint a portrait of you? So he took a picture and he painted this portrait and came back later on to this guy. And he said, like, you really did this. You really did paint my, my picture. And, and then he posted this on Instagram and people started to ask, like, how much can I pay, uh, buy this picture for? And, and he shared the story of this guy uh, under this picture, I think. And, and by sharing this story, by putting a face, by putting a... Uh, a background story to this person that everyone knew but still no one knew it opened up for for the kingdom of god to come into santa Ana. Um, and after that they had done this they had opened up stories from a lot of these homeless people and it has really you know changed the way people are thinking of each other and and the church has had a way through in this and 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 just to summarize this this is a really short version you should check this uh, sermon up from vinard anaheim but to summarize this, I think that you can see that through painting this one person that everyone knew, but no one knew, it opened up for more conversations with other homeless people with forgotten stories. And by sharing all these stories, people started to get to know these people for real and the story behind why some Christian people did this, you know, outreach thing uh, come up to the surface. They simply wanted to restore old forgotten dreams in broken people's lives. And by helping sharing this one person's story, it opened up the whole city to hear, to, to hear uh, about God. And, and many had become Christians by this one person's story, by this one simple act of one person in this city. And I think this story shows so clear on how God can use one person's story to open up a whole city. And this story is a good example of how God operates and always have been operating to meet with people and set them free. And one of many favorite, uh, one of many famous stories from the New Testament in the Bible is the story about when Jesus met with a Samaritan woman at the well. Probably, maybe you have heard it or maybe you have not heard it. I will give you the story as a summarize and I will share it some thoughts around it. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Galilee, uh, a city from uh, a bit far away from where they were at that time, uh, but they had to cross uh, Samaritan. And Samaritans were people of low rank, and as a you, as Jesus and his disciples were, you didn't want to talk to them, you were not supposed to, to, to be with them, and they were not good in their eyes, basically. But here we can see uh, and read about Jesus and uh, the Jewish man sitting down at noon at the well talking to this lonely Samaritan woman. At this time of the day it was super warm and no one usually went to the well at this time to get water. Normally they went in the morning or in the evening when it was a bit uh, colder outside. But this woman did go at the warmest hour of the day and you later realize that 
it was most likely because she was a person that people looked down on. A person that had been with many men, you can read, and the one she, were, she was with now were not her husband. So she was, in other people's uh, opinion, a sinner, a shame for the community. That's probably why she went for water when no one else was there. But here we see so clearly Jesus is talking to her. He's prophesying everything about her background and telling her that no matter the sins she has from back in time uh, and today, he loves her and he can give her true love uh, and a love that changed everything, a love that goes beyond all sins and all darkness, a love that will restore her life and bring back to her original design, a love that cast out evil, a love that forgets about her sins and give her a new life, a life in Christ, a life without sin, a life as it was supposed to, to be, the original design with her life, basically. So when she accept, accepted this love later on, she ran back, you can read, to the city telling everyone about this Jesus guy. And we can read that after this, many people um, got saved and become believers. And it's amazing to see how Jesus, through this simple act uh, of talking to one person, a whole region was forever changed. And it started by one person's conversion to get to know Jesus, to get to know the true love. And we can also read uh, from Acts, uh, uh, Book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 32 to 35, we read this story. As Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, was going through various places among all the believers, he went down to God's people who lived in Lydda. There he found a paralyzed man named Aeneas, who had been confined to bed for eight years. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus, the Messiah, heals you. Stand up and fold up your bed. And at once he stood up. Everyone who lived at Lydda and Sharon saw it, and they turned to the Lord. This is one more story about how one person's conversion, one person's kind of a healing um, made the whole region come to, 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 uh, to faith and believe in Jesus. And in Acts 9 verse 40 and 42, um, uh, I just want to give you a summary that in a city called Joppe, uh, there was this woman called Tabitha who were dead and people were sorry and they brought uh, Peter in there. And in verse 40 we can read, Peter requested them all to leave. Then he knelt down and prayed and turned to the body. Tabitha, he said, get up. She opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. In verse 42, we can read, this became known throughout the whole region of Joppe and many believed in the Lord. And also here is a story that one person's, I mean, of course, this was a little bit more miraculous, maybe one people, person's dead and coming to life change that whole region to become believers in Jesus. Here are three simple stories showing how God is using one person that everyone knew in the region and in radical ways changed their lives to be a witness of many others. And that change and transformation, which this one person experienced, laid the foundation for many more to accept Jesus and realize he is real and he's making all things good. When people meet him and experience his power, lives are forever changed. I can just speak to my own life that I know this, that I have experienced this. So I think what I sense God is asking us all today is what dreams is he birthing in you in this season of lockdown and social distancing? How can God show you that one person or that one conversation with someone that can lay the foundation for a whole region to be transformed by meeting one true God. So this question is giving me such a relief. Uh, I have often put so much pressure on me, and probably you have done it too, that I have to do so much in order to be part of seeing change happen. But with these stories, we realize and learn that often the big miracles and breakthroughs are happening through that one person that God gives in our hands through a normal conversation or simply by doing what we have been giving.
pray a simple prayer over someone and then God will do the rest. And the rest of what happened is in his hands to take care of. We can just do our part. And he's inviting us today to do our part, to ask him for that one person. So the challenge I want to send with you today with this message is, as I said earlier, what person in your daily life and where you are is God giving in your hands to talk and maybe even pray for. That can be a way of his kingdom to enter into a bigger region. Or what situation and platform is God giving you or has God already been giving you to share your faith and life story at, which can then impact people to meet God and having their lives forever changed. So that's what I want to send with you today. And I hope this is inspiring you and I hope you have a good time. And I just uh, wish you all the luck and uh, I pray many blessings over all of you and that this will inspire your life to see things happen that you have never seen before. Dreams comes true and that God will lead you throughout the days ahead. Thank you.